Hello, I am Bernardo Neri, master student at, in comparative history at Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. My presentation is Evolutionary and Cognitive Aspects of Property and Trade. In the emergence of political economy, things like property and trade were central. Mainstream economics today uses the debates to this few or long. But more and more researchers ask how this concept evolved in Homo sapiens. So, our purpose is to bridge this debate between the sphere of evolutionary anthropology and economic thought through the big history approach. A proposal with this work is to present an idea how to interpret the emergence of the concept of property. Chimpanzees are the closest living relatives to Homo sapiens. Genome analysis revealed the two species drifted apart around 6 million years, years ago, which means the probability of common characteristics, characteristics between the two species being convergent evolution is lower than average. It also makes the chimpanzee a good model of how the less common ancestor between them probably lived and behaved. When we introduce all the non-human prim primates in the mix, we can have a better understanding of common characteristics Characteristics may or not have origin prior to this less common ancestor. So, no human primates doesn't seem to have nowhere near the same concept of property as humans. But how does they behave in this regard? Well, primatologists seem to have identified two behaviors, possession and ownership. Possession is when an individual has control of an item in his person as physically holding it, and ownership when he does not have physical contact but exerts control on it. Some experiments with old world monkeys suggest they understand something analogous to the concept of possession. Sinomobus monkeys and Hamadre Babons doesn't try to take objects from others unless the whole object is not seen as being in their possession. As example, holding one end of a rope does not make the whole rope in the possession of the rope. Chimpanzees also behave as if they understand that an individual holding an object has the possession of it, including objects only in their vicinity, showing ownership. No human primate seems to understand something analogous to trade. Serves a pella, in experiments were able to trade token for food, even adapted to price trends made by the experimenters, as an offer and demand mechanism. Even demonstrate something analogous to risk aversion. Chimpanzees in trade experiments demonstrate something analogous to endowment effect value an object in their possession more than the same object when they don't own it, which is a behavior linked with loss aversion in humans. Chimpanzees seem to be able to understand doping for food barter with human experimenters, but doesn't seem able to replicate this kind of behavior between themselves. How do we bridge the cognitive difference between humans and the less common ancestor? Well, the social brain hypothesis dictates that selective pressure to maintain social cohesion in bigger groups was the cause for increased brain volume in social primates, which favored the increase in group size. More specific, the necessity to trace the individual possession, position, the individual position in the hierarchy in relation to others, as well the social hierarchy in relation between the other members of the group. This can be explained by the bigger the group size is, the lesser is the individual chance of predation and in-group retaliation, as well increases chance of fruitful foraging. The dominion model or cognitive model tries to offer an explanation to increase in the cognitive ability in Homo sapiens. It proposes a model where cognition a form of specialized cognition domains, like the general intelligence domain, 
the social intelligence domain, the technical intelligence domain, natural history intelligence domain, and the language, language domain. The fluidity between the cognitive domains would explain abstract talk in humans, like symbolic communication. And the inability of barter between chimpanzees, chimpanzees might be explained because when exchanging, exchanging token for food, if you are a human experimenter, they would be utilizing the general intelligence domain for this task. But when confronting another chimpanzee, the social intelligence take over and apply their social ethology, which doesn't seem to include barter or exchange behavior. Added to this, the emergence of a protein and fat rich diet, increasing the av available e uh, energy to be used by the brain, the energy of cooking, which diminishing the necessity for a larger digestive tract, and added food sharing behavior emitting a more stable calorie intake over time, would create an environment with positive feedback favorable for the increase of brain size and social cohesion and cognition. With this, let's interpret the emergency of seashell beads as personal adornments in early hunter gator human groups. As groups grow larger with vegetative population increase, they would split in more cohesive groups as the environmental restraint permits. They would occupy the immediate vicinity of the mother group range. And therefore, they would share common cultures. With material cultures being fine far away from the natural source, which implies either a trade or gift exchange between groups. The assertion then argued that this area on a only an ornamentation served as a whole of communication between groups that share a common, common cultural background. Transmitting information in the visual range instead of the vocal range, which might have an effect of lessening intergroup conflict and also a way of constantly avoiding inbreeding. Therefore, property might have emerged as a transmediality of technical intelligence domain, with language domain in the context of increasing social cohesion to the social intelligence domain. This is the bibliography of this, of this word. Thank you for time.